My name is Donna Kurt and welcome to Breaking Weight Loss Barriers, where we break weight loss barriers and make weight loss dreams come true. Today I will give you an update about what happened during weeks four through seven of my weight loss transformation journey. I will talk about an amazing thing that happened during the past seven weeks that motivated me to commit to a strict fasting routine for the remaining weight loss transformation. And I will share my approach that I use to help me stay motivated throughout the fasting period. And finally, I will give step-by-step -step tips on how to shape new behaviors through positive reinforcement so that you will be able to train yourself in new behaviors that will help you to overcome any weight loss hindrance that you may face. It's been about seven weeks since I began my weight loss transformation process, and my original weight was 280.6 pounds. Within the seven weeks, beginning January 1st, over the first three weeks through fasting, I lost 30.2 pounds. When the fasting period ended, I decided to resume my regular diet, and I set a goal to find the right balance between intimate fasting and eating to continue weight loss. So during weeks four through seven, I worked on trying to find the balance between fasting and eating for weight loss by gradually narrowing my eating window from eight hours to one hour, and I ate one or two meals within the eating window. And each time that I ate, I ate until I felt satisfied, and I didn't count calories. As a result, during week four, I regained 9.3 pounds. During week five, I regained 8.4 pounds. But then during weeks six and seven, I stopped regaining weight. Throughout the two weeks, no matter what I ate or how much I ate to reach a point of satiety, my weight leveled out at 268.3 pounds. I'm excited that my weight plateaued at a reduced weight and that the plateauing caused my body to maintain the remaining weight loss of 12 and a half pounds that I previously lost during the 21 day fast. Though I was happy that I stopped regaining weight, I wasn't alarmed at regaining weight and I wasn't amazed at reaching a weight loss plateau because I expected these things to take place based upon information that I learned in a book by Dr. Fung, The Complete Guide to Fasting, where he explains that when you fast, most of the weight that is lost is water weight, and that the water weight will rapidly be regained upon eating. You'll probably eventually experience a weight loss plateau as the weight loss during fasting begins to match the amount regained during eating. However, I was curious as to why did my weight plateau at a lower weight than my original weight when I didn't restrict my calorie intake. Well, from my observation, before I started my weight loss transformation this year, whatever my dietary intake was, it sustained a weight of 280.6 pounds. However, after fasting for 21 days, it appears that my body reset the dietary intake level to a lower amount than it was originally which automatically caused me to eat less food. And from the looks of things, my new dietary intake amount proved to be sufficient for a lower body weight, which is evident by my weight plateauing at 268.3 pounds. I'm amazed at how my body naturally reset itself to a lower dietary intake requirement due to fasting and how it maintained its level of satiety during the reset without any assist without any assistance from me and what i like most of all is that during this biological function i was free of any struggle to control my appetite my body never gave these great responses nor did i ever experience such bliss during a weight loss journey when i purposely restricted calories to lose weight 
When I went on a diet to lose weight that required calorie restriction, I got filled with agitation because of the fear of weight loss failure and the struggle to control my appetite. I think that anxiety always occurred because I associated calorie restriction with failed weight loss pursuits due to a lack of self-control and self-discipline. And in my mind, calorie restriction was strongly associated to the weak side of me that caused my unfavorable obese body image. Every time I restricted my calorie intake at a meal, between meals, binge eating followed. It was an upsetting cycle that always made me feel out of control and inadequate. So the whole idea of losing weight by way of following some fad diet that puts all kinds of dietary restrictions upon me is not what I like, nor am I interested in hearing about it. Because in my mind, that way of pursuing weight loss will only fill me up with anxiety and feelings of inadequacy. I need a dietary lifestyle approach that makes me feel empowered that seems attainable and sustainable for me to reach my weight loss goals and that makes me feel at peace within my spirit, mind, and body. And I believe that the best dietary lifestyle approach for weight loss and weight loss management is a holistic approach that helps a person to achieve a harmonious balance of spirit, mind, and body and that is adaptive to that person's social conditions. And so... I've resolved within my mind that intimate fasting along with a one hour eating window is the most comfortable and effective weight loss tool there is for me to use. I particularly love the pleasurable responses that I get from my body when it's put in a fasting state. And this dietary lifestyle approach makes me feel harmoniously balanced in spirit, mind, and body, and it is adaptive to my family life. Having a balance between your body and spirit goes hand in hand. How you perceive your body and spirit relationship depends or determines whether you'll have peace or war with your body. If you see your body and spirit relationship as a harmonious relationship, that is one yielding one to the other for stability, then you'll have peace. If you view the relationship as a tug of war, then you and your body will always be at war with each other and you'll find no peace in that kind of relationship. Here's an example. When I went on a 21-day fast this year and I set out to do a water fast for the whole 21 days, I felt empowered over my body because I didn't have to feed it for a long time and I was looking forward to great weight loss benefits. Also, my intent was that after I made it successfully through the 21 days, I was going to continue fasting for the whole month of January and then do a 21 day fast every other month. All was going well up until I started to experience diabetic complications that forced me to eat in order to keep my blood sugar levels from dropping into the danger zone. The fact that I was forced to eat made me angry. I hated the fact that food was disrupting my fasting ability, but there was nothing that I could do about it. I had to yield to the needs of my body. And I felt as if I was in a tug of war with my body. Every day I anticipated, will I win or will my body win? This internal tug of war interfered with my inner peace, though I pressed on to savor the moments during the hours that I was able to fast. When the fast was over, I was fed up with my body because it hindered me from having the fasting experience in the way that I wanted it to be during the 21 days and thereafter. However, after I set a goal to find the balance between fasting and eating, I realized that I had to strike a balance between my spirit and mental needs and my body's needs if I were to have peace on this weight loss transformation journey. The bottom line is that for me to achieve peace of spirit and mind, I must fast. And for me to avoid diabetic complications, I must eat so that my blood glucose levels won't drop into the danger zone. So in the end, I yield to the best dietary lifestyle approach that will keep me in a harmonious 
balance of spirit, mind, and body. And that approach is to do intimate fasting along with one meal a day. Therefore, as of February 15th, up until I reach my weight loss goal of 170 pounds, I will eat one meal a day at a random hour within each day. And during the remaining 23 hours of the day, while I am doing intermittent fasting, I will drink water, unsweetened tea with lemon, unsweetened coffee with cream, and or bone broth as desired. So when dealing with weight loss and weight loss management, I recommend that the goal should be to always strive for a harmonious relationship between your spirit, mind, and body to have a peaceful, sustainable weight loss and weight loss maintenance experience. For many of us, to attain this inner balance of spirit, mind, and body, to achieve the desired weight loss goals, we must go through a process of developing faith, confidence, and or new positive behaviors that are easily attainable over a short period of time. The tips that I will share with you today can be used to build faith, confidence, and new behaviors, all of which will help you to make your weight loss dreams come true. I use these same guidelines to overcome my hindrances that I'm confronted with, especially weight loss hindrances. Based upon the late psychologist Edward Gondyke's theory of the law of effect, as defined by Wikipedia, which states that it is the belief that a pleasing after effect strengthened the action that produced it. Every time that I fasted during my 21 days fast and I got the pleasing effect of fasting, my desire and ability to fast was strengthened. And to ensure that I stayed motivated to fast, Every day that I was successful at or came close to sticking to my fasting routine, I rewarded myself with a reward sticker. So based on Thorndike theory, I got a double portion of pleasing effects, which made me more committed to practicing the fasting technique. Now, the whole idea of rewarding myself for fasting was influenced by the late B.F. Skinner concept of operant conditioning, which is learning through positive or negative reinforcement, of which I use the positive reinforcement strategy. Based upon the theory of operant conditioning, by strengthening the relationship between the fasting and the rewards that follows, the idea to do fasting will become established within the mind as an automatic quick response to the solution to weight loss and weight loss maintenance. So to establish new behaviors within my psyche as part of my automatic responses that will ensure the practice, uh, that will ensure that I practice the right responses to resist weight loss hindrances, I use the behavior modification techniques that I learned from Thorndike and Skinner. And to me, Thorndike's law of effect goes hand in hand with Skinner's operant conditioning concept. Anybody can use these positive reinforcement strategies to shape new positive behaviors and to train themselves to build confidence and faith and will help them to achieve the mindset and behaviors that will impact their efforts at making their weight loss dreams come true. There are so many weight loss hurdles that one has to get through in order to achieve their weight loss goals. So today, I will share information about one of the most dangerous and unhealthy weight loss hindrances that had me strung out on food for over 30 years. I will tell you the steps that I took to overcome the addiction, and I will review the reinforcement strategy to shape new behaviors that will become automatic responses to avoid weight loss hindrances. Finally, I've included a pathway for you to begin to form new behaviors. I recommend that you do the, do the assignment at the end of this session so that you'll have the techniques on how to sustain victory over weight loss hindrances that hinders you from achieving your weight loss goals. Now, one of the main ingredients that is associated to, to uh, compulsive overeating and binge eating that had me strung out on food is high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is a genetically engineered sweetener that entered the U.S. food and beverage supply in 1975 
through 1985. It is used in soft drinks, most processed foods and beverages, including breads, cereals, yogurts, condiments, and snack food. High fructose corn syrup causes a biochemical effect during the digestive process that causes habituation that leads to food addiction, resulting in obesity, obesity-related illness, and hinders obesity intervention. Normally, when we ingest high sugary substances, our stomach sends signals to the brain to release leptin, which causes satiety or suppression of appetite, and the pancreas releases insulin to carry the glucose in the blood to the cells. However, high fructose corn syrup does not cause an insulin response, and it stops the leptin production, preventing the regulation of food intake and body weight. As a result, a person will be continuously hungry without the satiety effect of leptin. And because hunger is persistent, potential overconsumption of sugary foods and beverages is always present. When a person is not aware of the biochemical effect of high fructose corn syrup, he or she will continue to consume massive amounts of sugary foods and beverages persistently despite problems aggravated by the substance and do not know how to stop the habituation. The ability to consume moderate amounts of sugary foods and beverages becomes a constant struggle. However, once you are able to break the high fructose corn syrup addiction and the habitual behaviors of consuming high sugary foods and beverages, obesity intervention can be successful. Kay Shepard, an eating disorder specialist, says, food addiction cravings are like the alcoholic's craving for alcohol. The substance triggers the overindulgence and the regions of the brain that it affects are the same for the alcoholic and the food addict. Like the alcoholic, food addicts crave refined carbohydrates, sweeteners, fats, and processed food. To assume that an addict can use an addictive agent in moderation is absurd. The slightest consumption of triggering of the triggering substance is going to trigger binges. Therefore, the effective treatment for refined carbohydrate addiction is abstinence. With over 30 years of sugar addiction, the evidence presented enlightened me that the root cause of obesity is not psychological addiction. Instead, it's a biochemical addiction caused by chronic exposure to high fructose corn syrup. So I thought that if I eliminate the addictive agent, then I'll be able to eliminate the addiction. So I began to read the labels on all food and beverage items that I consumed to see if they contain high fructose corn syrup. And almost every item contained it. I decided to learn to enjoy foods that don't contain high fructose corn syrup. But it was difficult for me to get used to the new taste of foods and beverages that didn't contain this ingredient because those items taste bland. But my taste buds eventually adapted to the taste of the bland food. However, it took about seven years for me to break the addiction to this ingredient. The whole time that I was strung out on food, I had wished for a breakthrough of something that will deliver me from food addiction. And one day back in 2011, I took a course in the science of nutrition. And it was then that I learned that high fructose corn syrup is strongly associated to compulsive overeating and binge eating, both of which I struggled to overcome. So at that time, I had begun to wean myself away from high fructose corn syrup and prepared meals for my family and me that didn't contain this ingredient. When I broke the addiction about seven years later, I overcame compulsive overeating and binge eating too. 
Practicing abstinence from high fructose corn syrup has cured me from food addiction. Here's what I did to break the addiction of high fructose corn syrup. I set a goal to replace all food, beverages, and condiments that contains high fructose corn syrup with those items that don't contain it. And I made small changes throughout the years, replacing one item at a time. For each item that I replaced, I had to adjust to the new flavor. And once I became comfortable with the new taste, I repeated this process for every item that I replaced. Over years, as my exposure to high fructose corn syrup decreased, I noticed that my compulsive overeating and binge eating was lessened, and then eventually I had no desire to do either behaviors. Now, here's an example of how I progressed from eating yogurt that contained high fructose corn syrup and sugary fruit to eating plain Greek yogurt without added fruit. Instead of buying the yogurt that contained high fructose corn syrup and sugary fruit, I replaced that yogurt with one that contained sugar and fruit. As weeks moved on, I replaced the yogurt that contained sugar and fruit with plain yogurt that contained sugar only and added fresh fruit. More weeks and months passed, and then I replaced the plain yogurt that contained sugar with plain yogurt that didn't have sugar, and I added fresh fruit. Sometimes I dazzled a little uh, teaspoon of maple syrup in my plain yogurt, but eventually I didn't need any sweeteners, and it tastes good. Over time, I tried plain unsweetened whole milk Greek yogurt without fruit, and I fell in love with it. Here's another example of how I progressed from drinking sodas that contain high fructose corn syrup from using the same progressive process. I went from drinking regular soda to drinking 100% juice. I moved from drinking 100% juice to drinking zero calorie diet sodas. I went from drinking zero calorie diet sodas to drinking carbonated water with flavors. I went from drinking carbonated water with flavors to drinking plain water, unsweetened tea with lemon, unsweetened coffee with cream, and or unsalted bone broth as desired. Here's one more example of how I progressed from eating large quantities of ice cream, cakes, cookies, pie, candy, and puddings that contain high fructose corn syrups every day as part of my meals or as my main meal of the day. I went from consuming one main meal of junk food, which contained a gallon of ice cream and a pound cake, to eating a half a, ice, half a gallon of ice cream and a half of a pound cake plus a meat and cheese hero sandwich which, uh, with chips on the side. Over time, I learned to consume a pint of ice cream with a quarter of a pound cake and a hero with salad on the side. Then as more time passed, my main meal consists of a hero sandwich with salad and chips on the side. Eventually, my main meal consists of a chicken Caesar salad with pita bread and broth on the side. Now, I eat ice cream and cake as well as all of the junk foods once in a blue moon, but I get the healthier version of these items that don't contain high fructose corn syrup. This way, I don't have the addictive feeling after eating it. Currently, the most, uh, currently most of the time, if I want a dessert, I eat seeds, nuts, and or dark chocolate covered with almonds. And that's my favorite. Now, from my examples, did you notice the pattern of behavior that I used to progressively overcome high fructose corn syrup addiction? I never went cold turkey. I broke away from addiction using small steps. When I became comfortable with the progress that I made with a step, I moved to the next step. And I repeatedly progressed through the steps up until I overcame the addiction to high fructose corn syrup. Now, 
At first, when I started to progressively break away from using high fructose corn syrup, my reward system wasn't that great because I was hard on myself. I didn't give myself a reward until I fully overcame a planned step. But when I learned shaping techniques from Thorndike and Skinner, I was lenient with myself. If I came close to the desired new behavior, or when I fulfilled the desire, the desired be, uh, new behavior, I rewarded myself. This method encouraged me to keep moving towards my desired new behaviors because I received the pleasing after effects each time that I made the progress. Every time that you experience the pleasing after effect, the behavior that produced it is strengthened and will eventually become part of your automatic responses. Now, this is the goal that we want to achieve through shaping, uh, through the shaping process. We want to turn our new behaviors into automatic responses so that we have a built-in response system that has the right responses that will guard us from weight loss hindrances. Sometimes, although you've overcome an addictive item, just seeing or smelling the item may trigger a feeling of agitation or may or may cause craving that item and then you start feeling like you can't resist it. When that happens, before you do anything, stop. Stand still. Breathe to relax yourself. And then think about what's making you have that false sense of hunger or what's making you feel agitated. Quickly in your mind, establish a solution of how you will deal with the temptation. Will you walk away? Will you choose a healthier version? Is it time to eat that healthy snack that you've been carrying around with you all times? Once you've chosen a solution, immediately follow through with that solution. It's important to find a solution so that you will be equipped to shield yourself from yielding to the temptation. Triggers are all around us and they will never go away. So you have to continuously repeat the same response in the similar situation so that that response will automatically protect you from the weight loss hindrance that you are faced with. It's good to keep a small notebook and pen with you, excuse me, so that you can record whenever something's triggering you and what solutions you used. Then reward yourself for identifying the trigger and for finding a solution to resist it. Remember that the reward system will help you get stronger and one day your behavior will be the automatic quick response to resolve the compulsive feeling that you get whenever you're triggered. Now, Let's do an assignment to build new behaviors to help you make your weight loss dreams come true. The purpose of this assignment is to learn how to do intimate fasting. Some of us eat all day long from the time we wake up until bedtime and find it hard to stop eating for up to four hours between meals. And the constant eating is hindering weight loss. So the goal here is to learn to eat less frequent until you are able to go without eating up to four hours between meals. If you are addicted to high fructose corn syrup like I was, it may be a bit difficult to do intermittent fasting because hunger is persistent. So you might want to review how I overcame high fructose corn syrup addiction and start from there by following the progressive steps that I took to wean myself from foods and beverages that contain high fructose corn syrup. But if you aren't addicted to it, then proceed with this assignment. If you've never done intimate fasting before, I recommend that you try this on your day off where you may be in a relaxed environment. This is how I learned to do intimate fasting. After a meal, get a writing tool and a writing paper and write down the digital time of four hours in 15 minute intervals down the left side on a piece of paper. Every 15 minutes that you don't eat, make a star or a check mark next to that time slot. And do this for every 15 minutes that you don't eat food. Whenever you feel tempted to eat, you are allowed to drink plain water, mineral water, water with lemon, 
unsweetened tea with lemon, unsweetened coffee with cream, or broth. But whatever you do, try not to give in to the urge to eat. If you get agitated, do to do an do an activity that you enjoy to distract you from the desire to eat. Record the activity that you do next to the time that you do it, or that you, the, next to the time that you're going to do it. It's good to keep a diary too, to write down how you feel every 15 minutes. By writing these things down as the time progresses, you'll become aware of your current behaviors your dietary practices, and your feeling about your lifestyle. This information will help you to set goals based upon your individual needs. Remember that this technique can be used to build any new behavior. As I progressed to trying to do intimate fasting for longer hours, I became more creative with using calendars and reward stickers. Here are tips that may help you to reward yourself more creatively if you desire. Choose two different types of reward stickers of your choice that you will eventually give to yourself so that you will have them on hand as you need to use them. Obtain a calendar for the month that you will start to shape new behaviors in. Then choose a weight loss strategy that you will follow. I chose intimate fasting and a one hour eating window. Practice the weight loss strategy. Every time that you progress towards fulfilling your weight loss goals, but don't quite fulfill all of them for the day, give yourself a reward sticker for the efforts that you put forth before you retire. Place a reward sticker on the calendar date that reflects the date that you're in. The type of reward sticker that you choose to use can only be used under a similar circumstance. Now, every time you manage to fulfill your entire weight loss goal for the day before you retire, reward yourself with the other type of reward sticker that you've chosen and only use that type of sticker under a similar situation. It is important that you reward yourself each and every day at the end of your day before retiring. Positive reinforcement following a good response strongly influences the development of new positive behaviors that will promote and sustain your weight loss goals. Each day that you strive to follow these steps, you will be strengthening your responses to resolve your weight loss issues. And eventually, the new behavior that you taught yourself will become an automatic response to how you deal with balancing your weight loss and weight loss maintenance. Your weight will only change when you change your behaviors. If you keep behaving the same way, you will keep getting the same results. If you want different results, you must learn to do things differently. As Albert Einstein said, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, and expect different results is insanity. Therefore, there's just no getting around it. You'll have to make behavioral changes if you want to change your weight. So follow up with the steps I mentioned to begin to establish new behaviors that will bring out your weight loss success. And I hope that these steps will be helpful to you in creating new behaviors that will assist you in making your weight loss dreams come true. We are now at the end of this session. Thank you for watching and listening to this video. If this program is inspirational to you, please return again for more inspiration. And remember, what we do today will definitely pay off tomorrow. May we all be fulfilled with our weight loss dreams together. So be it.